Hi, and welcome to part four of an introduction to a BioBreeze. My name is Andrew Proka, and I work at Aerosystems Integration as a communications consultant and a technology evangelist. In parts one through three of this video series, I explored a simple make call snapping consisting of a variety of engagement designer tasks connected together in order to place a call, play an announcement, collect a DTMF digit, and make a decision based upon that digit. The snap-in was launched manually and used fairly static data. Today, I am moving away from outgoing calls and turning my attention to developing a snap-in invoked by an incoming call. While many of the breeze constructs are the same as what you saw with the make call snap-in, there are a few significant differences. A breeze server is a SIP entity connected to an Avaya session manager. In the previous videos, my snap-in used session manager and communication manager to make and release calls. It also used the Avaya media server to play announcements and collect digits. For the call intercept snapping, I will continue to use both session manager and the media server, but instead of telling session manager to create the call, session manager is going to invoke my snap-in when a new call has arrived. Session manager and Breeze allow an administrator to configure which calls are of importance to a snap-in. For example, it's possible to configure a snap-in to only run when someone calls my personal extension. It's also possible to tell Breeze to launch a snap-in when anything within a range of numbers is called. These numbers can be DIDs or toll-free numbers. I can also use Session Manager and Breeze to invoke a snap-in when an endpoint makes a call to the outside world. For instance, I may want a snap-in that blocks users from calling certain numbers at particular times of day. This configuration of numbers occurs in two places. First, Session Manager will determine which numbers require Breeze involvement and Breeze will determine which snap-ins run when those numbers are called or called from. Let's begin with Session Manager. You are looking at the implicit users portion of Session Manager configuration. Think of implicit users as telephone number patterns. For this video, I want you to pay attention to 2304. I've configured Session Manager to send all calls that originate from 2304 or terminate to 2304 to the server called CE1. CE1 is my Breeze cluster. Moving to Engagement Development Platform, there is a similar entry for implicit users. This configuration allows me to associate the numbers that Session Manager sends to Breeze to service profiles. In this case, 2304 is being sent to the service profile I call Procop. Inside the service profiles are references to snap-ins that will be invoked for the numbers configured against it. This is where I'm going to configure the call intercept snap-in I am about to write. It's now time to build the snap-in. As always, a snap-in begins with a start event. Unlike my previous make call snap-in though, I'm going to open this one up and set a few values. In order for my snap-in to launch on an incoming call, I must set the event family to call intercepted. Since I am interested in incoming calls, I set the event type to call intercept to call at party. Lastly, I need a version number, and I choose the default of 1.0. Let's keep this simple and play an announcement before allowing the call to ring through. For this, I need play announcement. Fairly simple. Uh, thank you for calling Aero System Integration. As always, I need to map over a universal call ID, but this is interesting. This is different than what we had before. Before, we had the universal call ID coming from the make call, but now we have the universal call ID coming from the start schema. This is a call intercept snapping, and it will come with this start schema that contains a lot of information about the call, including the universal call ID. So I can map that over. Save it. OK. Next, I want the call to just ring through to the call at party. So I can open up telephony communications. 
bring over. Allow call. Get these together. Open up property. The only thing I need to do here is map over the UCID. Save this. Then lastly, I need an, an end event. I think we are ready to go, but I really ought to validate the workflow. Zero errors, zero warnings. Everything looks good. So now, let's save the snap in. And put it in my ProCop folder. Let's call this uh, incoming attack. Save. And now, Let's deploy the workflow. So we've done this before in the other videos. With one difference, I'm going to assign it to service profile. And I'm going to use service profile ProCop. Click OK. And Breeze tells us that this snap-in has been successfully deployed. It's now time to test. Unlike my make call snap-in, I'm not going to use admin console to create an instance of the snap-in. Instead, I will call the telephone number associated with the snap-in. I will do that with my 1x client. 20, 3, 0, 4. Thank you for calling Arrow Systems Integration. Did you hear that? The caller heard the announcement before the call rang through to 2304. Even though I did not launch the snap-in with admin console, I can still use it to monitor the snap-in. This is a record of the snap-in I just exercised. I could do the same thing with a snap-in in progress. Well, there you have it. A simple yet fully functional call intercept snap-in. Aren't you impressed by how quickly I was able to put that together? Seriously, that same thing would take me hours with a traditional API such as TSAPing. In future videos, I will build upon this work by adding other forms of communications as well as web services. With that, I will close out this fourth video. Please subscribe to the Aero Systems Integration YouTube channel for additional installments. Bye for now.